What's up guys and welcome back to another eBay miniature rescue. Today we're going to try and speed paint this blood letter. So recently I picked up a pack of 10 of these on eBay for $12.99 which is a pretty sweet deal and they were all primed and pretty much ready to paint when I got them. I did have to fill some gaps, uh, specifically the one in the head, I think that's kind of a common issue you know with that headpiece that attaches but a little bit of green stuff and some milliput to fill in some of the smaller ones and we're ready to go so starting with Vallejo's burnt umber I'm gonna go from the bottom up and just do the shadow over the black and this brown mixes really well with red which is what we're gonna end up doing in a little bit Coming in with this De La Rowney white ink, this is really where the time saver is going to be for painting. Especially if you're painting, you know, 10 to 20 of these and you're trying to get them all done really quickly, then this zenithal highlight over our nice brown and black shadows is really going to do most of the work for us. Now throwing some of this crimson into the airbrush, we're gonna go over the entire model and with our zenithal highlight, this is going to mix and give us all of our really bright reds on top and that brown is gonna give a nice deep red in those shadows. And that makes it for a really nice gradient on the bodies of these blood letters. What we're also gonna do is focus mainly on the face and the shoulders, that way those are the things that stand out the most when you pick up this miniature. Now using Vallejo's Hot Orange, we're going to stick to those focal points and really brighten them up. So the face, the shoulders, that fin on his back, and kind of that upper thigh, knee area. And what that's going to do is when we come back with a wash and do the, the whole model, it's going to keep all of that stuff really bright. All right, so here's where this video diverges a little bit, and it kind of gives you two options to go for. Now, when I got these models, there was a little bit of white, uh, white gradient on the end of these swords. So I thought, okay, you know, I've got this orange, I'll make it super fire hot, right? So I painted the rest of that orange, and then I came back with this yellow, and I thought, okay, that looks pretty cool. You know, it's it's got a nice, gradient to it, um, throwing that in the horns too, you know, just to make those kind of pop a little bit more. And I started to think, you know, this isn't enough contrast. And I mean, we've brought those focal areas out, but do we really want that specific area, the sword, to stand out as much as the rest of that body, you know, using the same colors? Because I do want it to stand out. And coming back with some of the white, just doing the tip on there really sets that fire off so if you like the way that this looks then this is a perfectly fine direction to go eventually we're going to come back and change that and i'll give you a second option i also edge highlighted that sword and that just kind of brought everything together uh, so when we come back and wash it it'll still have a nice kind of outline to it And since the white is out, I might as well take care of the eyes and the teeth. Something to think about when you're batch painting and you're trying to speed paint through, you know, battle line units like this, you should probably have a plan going in. And generally when I'm painting, I like to kind of go with the flow, you know, especially if it's one model. Uh, so this is kind of like a test model for the rest of the things that I have. But if you are going to sit down and paint a batch, make sure you know what color that sword's going to be before you do it. <laughs> so now coming in with a little bit of Fire Dragon Bright, I'm just going to edge highlight and kind of glaze into the tips of that fin. 
And you could do this with the airbrush or you could leave it, you know, that orange already. But I just wanted a little bit of extra on that fin as a focal point. That being said, this is a mostly unnecessary step uh, if you're trying to get this done really quick. Now coming in with the white surface primer, I'm just going to cover that sword blade so I can start over. Now with magic blue, I'm going to cover that sword so we can have a really icy blade. Lothorn blue, about halfway down the sword to the tip, will give a nice lighter blue highlight and that way we can move into more of a white to give that ice. Coming in with some white ink, that's going to be the tip of the sword and that's going to give us our really bright white. Now for pretty much the last step, we're going to come in with some Karaberg Crimson and wash everything except for the sword. I should also mention that I painted some silver over that white primer on the rest of the sword because I got some a little too far up. So for a set of 10 of these, $12.99 is a pretty sweet deal. And I actually found that listing going to fatfingers.com. And that's basically, you, you type in what you're looking for and it'll search for anything on eBay that has a misspelling attached to it. And it's a pretty awesome way to find things that have just been kind of shoved in a corner. So check out fatfingers.com. I'll put that in the description. It's definitely a good resource. So this model took me about an hour to do. And if you're batch painting, you could probably add like 15 minutes per model to that and be done in a couple of hours for, for 10. Especially doing the airbrush like this and not really highlighting a lot because we kind of pre-highlighted everything before we washed it. So that's something to think about when you're doing a lot at once. You know, if you get your colors where you want them to be and they're bright enough, they're still going to show through that wash really well. And having the sword like this, I personally like better because that icy blue just stands off that red and orange really, really well. Some people do prefer the fire swords with these and I've seen that and they look really good. So it's kind of up to you and I'll let you guys decide in the comments which one you like better. Thank you for joining me on another eBay Miniature Rescue. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please consider liking, sharing, and subscribing. Don't forget to check out that fatfingers.com website. It's super useful. Thanks again. I'm Casey, and I will see you in the next video.